Good evening. Welcome to wherever you are on the inner tubes here. It looks like we've got people watching on uh, Twitter through Periscope and on YouTube and on uh, a couple on Facebook. So that's fantastic. Welcome. I'm glad that you're here. It is it is Holy Week. It is that week when we... All right, we got an audio loop. Let's see why that's happening. There we go. Found it. Killed that bug. All right. Now everything is on track. It's Holy Week. It's the week that we, uh, that those of us who follow Jesus spend a week with Jesus walking uh, the final days of his life from his entry into Jerusalem through uh, his uh, arrest. Uh, well, first the upper room with the disciples, then his arrest and his trial, his crucifixion, and of course, uh, on Resurrection Sunday, the resurrection that is the source of life, the source of hope for us. Um, Christians of all uh, traditions and varieties and different theologies uh, keep some sort of observance during this time, even if it's just uh, having a big fancy service on Easter. But of course, most Christians uh, for the last nearly 2,000 years have done uh, a more in-depth observance that includes multiple gatherings, services over the course of the week, reflections, even in some circles fasting in, pre in preparation for uh, the Feast of Easter. And so what I'm going to share with you tonight is uh, an Easter liturgy uh, written by a pastor in what is presently Turkey, uh, what we used to call Asia Minor. Um, this pastor's name is Melito. He was uh, a pastor in the town of Sardis, uh, and uh, he wrote what is one of the earliest still existing uh, Easter liturgies that uh, was observed by the Christians. Uh, in his community, uh, there was an extensive celebration that took uh, more than a day, uh, several gatherings and long gatherings. And the piece that I'm going to read to you is actually uh, quite short. Uh, it'll take less than 30 minutes to read. But it comes after they have already listened to uh, lengthy readings from the Old Testament that cover both the story of creation and the story of the exodus of uh, the Jewish people being rescued by God from slavery in Egypt and a number of other passages. And after listening to all of this scripture, then this um, liturgy was presented. So I'm going to... Um, uh, read you almost all of it. I'm going to excerpt a few sections. I'm cutting out a few sections just because there's some places that are redundant uh, for us. And there's also one passage that I just want to acknowledge that the way that we read some of these ancient texts today is different from how they were read in ages past. And there's a section in this in this Easter liturgy that today would, I think, really very realistically feel very anti-Semitic. I don't think that Melito was trying to make an anti-Semitic point. I think that Melito was trying to um, talk about the experience of uh, humanity. But of course, in the Passion Week story, uh, as it's laid out in the Gospels, um, the people who are opposing Jesus in the Passion Week story are the Jewish leaders. And today, as I, I, when I'm preaching on these passages, I don't cite the Jewish leaders at all, uh, I talk about religious leaders because I think that the kinds of things that we see in the gospel are the kinds of things that any religious community can do that stand in the way of love and God's work. Um, and so I'm just going to not read uh, that passage because um, I don't think it's helpful to us at this point. Um, but the rest of the um, liturgy I find to be uh, quite compelling, and I hope that you find it interesting as well. So take a deep breath, um, sit back, relax, have a beverage at hand. Um, I'm going to uh, go into a, a reading uh, a, a reading pace that's not 
fast because I want us to just sit with these words and hear them as we're reflecting on Jesus um, right now in our experience of Holy Week. The scripture of the Exodus of the Hebrews has been read. The words of the mystery have been declared. How the sheep was sacrificed, how the people were saved, and how Pharaoh was flogged by the mystery. Therefore, well beloved, understand how the mystery of the Pasha is both new and old, eternal and provisional, perishable and imperishable, mortal and immortal. It is old with respect to the law, new with respect to the word, provisional with respect to the type, yet everlasting through grace. It is perishable because of the slaughter of sheep, imperishable because of the life of the Lord. It is immortal because of the burial in the ground, immortal because of the resurrection from the dead. For the law is old, but the word is new. The type is provisional, but grace is everlasting. The sheep is perishable, but the Lord, not broken as a lamb, but raised up as God, is imperishable. For though led to the slaughter like a sheep, he was no sheep. Though speechless as a lamb, neither yet was he a lamb. For there was once a type, but now the reality has appeared. For instead of the lamb, there was a son, and instead of the sheep, a man. In the man was Christ encompassing all things. So the slaughter of the sheep and the sacrificial procession of the blood and the writing of the law encompass Christ, on whose account everything in the previous law took place, though better in this new dispensation. For the law was a word and the old was new going out from Zion and Jerusalem, and the commandment was grace, and the type was a reality, and the lamb was a son, and the sheep was a man, and the man was God. For he was born a son, and led as a lamb, and slaughtered as a sheep, and buried as a man, and rose from the dead as God, being God by his nature, and a man. He is all things. He is law in that he judges. He is word in that he teaches. He is grace in that he saves. He is father in that he begets. He is son in that he is begotten. He is sheep in that he suffers. He is human in that he is buried. He is God in that he is raised up. This is Jesus the Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the mystery of the Pasha. Just as it was written in the law, which was read a little while before, I shall now narrate the scriptural story, how he gave command to Moses in Egypt, went, uh, how he gave command to Moses in Egypt when wanting to flog Pharaoh and to free Israel from that flogging through the hand of Moses. Look, he says, you shall take a lamb without spot or blemish. And toward the evening, slaughter it with the sons of Israel, and eat it at night with haste, and not a bone of it shall you break. This is what you shall do, he says. You shall eat it in one night by families and tribes, with your loins girded up and with staves in your hands. This is the Passover of the Lord, a commemoration to the sons of Israel forever. Taking the blood of the sheep, you shall anoint the front doors of your houses putting blood on the doorposts of the entrance, a sign of the blood to avert the angel. For behold, I shall strike Egypt, and in one night shall both beast and man be made childless. Then Moses, having slaughtered the sheep and performed the mystery at night with the sons of Israel, sealed the doors of the houses to protect the people and avert the angel. But while the sheep is being slaughtered, 
and the Pasha is being eaten, and the mystery is completed, and the people are rejoicing, and Israel is being sealed, then came the angel to strike Egypt, those uninitiated in the mystery, those with no part of the Pasha, those not sealed by the blood, those not guarded by the spirit, the hostile, the faithless. In one night he struck them and made them childless. It was indeed a strange spectacle. Here, people beating their breasts. There, people wailing. The grief-stricken Pharaoh in the middle, seated on sackcloth and ashes. Palpable darkness thrown round him as a mourning cloak, clad in all Egypt like a tunic of grief. Such was the calamity that surrounded Egypt and made her suddenly childless. Israel was guarded by the slaughter of the sheep and was illuminated by the shedding of blood, and the death of the sheep was a wall for the people. O oh, strange and ineffable mystery, that the slaughter of sheep was Israel's salvation, and the death of the sheep was life for the people, and the blood averted the angel? What is this strange mystery that Egypt is struck down and Israel is guarded? Listen now to the meaning of the mystery. Nothing, beloved, is spoken or made without an analogy and a sketch. For everything that is made and spoken has its analogy. Which is spoken is an analogy, what is made is a prototype. So that whatever is made may be perceived through the prototype, and whatever is spoken clarified by the illustration. This is what occurs in the case of a first draft, it is not a finished work, but exists so that, through the model, that which is to be can be seen. Therefore, a preliminary sketch is made of what is to be, from wax or clay or wood, so that what will come about, taller in height, greater in strength, more attractive in shape, wealthier in workmanship, can be seen through the small and provisional sketch. So then, just as with the provisional examples, so it is with eternal things. As it is with things on earth, so it is with things in heaven. For indeed the Lord's salvation and his truth was prefigured in the people, and the decree of the gospel was proclaimed and advanced by the law. Thus the people was a type, a preliminary sketch, and the law was the writing of an analogy. The gospel is now our fulfillment the church, the repository of reality. So the type was valuable in advance of the reality, and the illustration was wonderful before its elucidation. The people were valuable before the church arose. The law was wonderful before the illumination of the gospel. For then the slaughter of sheep was of value, but now worthless because of the Lord's life. Then the death of the sheep was of value, but now worthless because of the Lord's salvation. Then the blood of the sheep was a value, now worthless because of the Lord's Spirit. The dumb lamb was a value, but now worthless because of the Son without spot. The temple was a value, but now Christ is the heavenly temple. For it is not on one place nor in a narrow plot that the glory of God is established, but on all the ends of the earth. And his grace has been poured out, and the Almighty God has made his dwelling there through Christ our Lord, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now you have heard the narrative of the type and its correspondence. Hear now the confirmation of the mystery. What is the Pasha? It is called by its name because of what constitutes it. From suffer comes suffering. Therefore, Learn, beloved, who is the suffering one, and who shares in the suffering one's suffering, and why the Lord is present on the earth to surround himself with the suffering one and take him to the heights of the heavens. God, in the beginning, having made the heavens and the earth and all in them through the word, formed humanity from the earth and shared his own breath. He set him in a garden in the east, in Eden, and there to rejoice. Then he laid down for him the law through his commandment, Eat food from all the trees in this garden, yet eat not from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For on that day that you eat, you shall die. 
The man was susceptible by nature of good and evil, as a clod of earth may receive seed of either kind. And so he consented to the wicked, seductive counselor of the serpent, and stretched out for the tree, and broke the commandment, and disobeyed God. For this he was thrown out into the world. Yet man became fecund and long lived. Yet through tasting of the tree he was destroyed and dissolved into the earth. He left an inheritance to his children. And as an inheritance, he left his children, not purity, but lust, not incorruption, but decay, not honor, but dishonor, not freedom, but bondage, not sovereignty, but tyranny, not life, but death, not salvation, but destruction. Strange and terrible was the destruction of people on earth, for these things attended them. They were grasped by tyrannical sin. They were led to the land of sensuality. They were swamped in unsatisfying pleasures by adultery, by lust, by license, by love of money, by murder, by the shedding of blood, by the tyranny of evil, by the tyranny of lawlessness. The father took up sword against his son. The son laid hands upon his father and impiously struck the breast which fed him. Brother killed brother, host harmed guest, friend murdered friend, and man struck down with a tyrannical right hand. Everyone became murderers, parasites, infanticides, fratricides, everyone on earth. Sin rejoiced in all of this, working together with death, making forays into human souls, and preparing the bodies of the dead as his food. Sin sent his sign on everyone, and those on whom he etched his mark were doomed to death. All flesh fell under sin and every body under death, and every soul was plucked from its dwelling of flesh, and that which was taken from the dust was reduced to dust, and the gift of God locked away in Hades. What was marvelously knit together became unraveled, the beautiful body divided. Humanity was doled out by death, for a strange disaster and captivity surrounded him. He was dragged off a captive under the shadow of death, and the Father's image was left desolate. For this reason is the paschal mystery completed in the body of the Lord. The Lord made advance preparations for his own suffering in the patriarchs and the prophets and in the whole of the people. Through the law and the prophets he sealed them. That which more recently and most excellently came to pass, he arranged from of old For when it would come to pass, it would find faith, having been foreseen of old. Thus, the mystery of the Lord, prefigured from of old through the vision of a type, is today fulfilled and has found faith, even though people think it is something new. For the mystery of the Lord is both new and old, old with respect to the law, but new with respect to grace. But if you scrutinize the type through its outcome, you will discern him. Thus, if you wish to see the mystery of the Lord, look at Abel, who was likewise slain, and Isaac, who was likewise tied up, and Joseph, who was likewise traded, and Moses, who was likewise exposed, and David, who was likewise hunted down, and the prophets, who likewise suffer for the sake of, uh, for the sake of Christ. And look at the sheep slaughtered in the land of Egypt, which saved Israel through its blood whilst Egypt was struck down. The mystery of the Lord is proclaimed through the prophetic voice. For Moses said to the people, And you shall look upon your life hanging before your eyes night and day, and you will not have faith in your life. And David said to the people, Why have the nations been haughty and the people imagined vain things? The kings of the earth stood by and the rulers gathered themselves together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Jeremiah says to the people, I am like a harmless lamb led to slaughter. They planned evil for me, saying, Come, let us put wood on his bread, and let us rub him out from the land of the living, and his name will not be remembered. And Isaiah says, Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter. Like a silent lamb before its shearer he goes not to open his mouth. Who shall tell of his generation? Many other things were proclaimed by many prophets concerning the mystery of the Pasha, who is Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. This is the one who comes from heaven onto earth by means of the suffering one. 
and wraps himself in the suffering of one by means of the virgin womb. And comes forth a human being. He accepted the suffering of the suffering one through suffering in a body which could suffer and set free the flesh from suffering, though the spirit which cannot die through the spirit which cannot die, he slew the manslayer death. He is the one led like a lamb and slaughtered like a sheep. He ransomed us from the worship of the world as from the land of Egypt. He set us free from the slavery of the devil in the hands of Pharaoh. He sealed our souls with his own spirit and the members of our body with his blood. This is the one who clad death in shame and, as Moses did to Pharaoh, made the devil grieve. This is the one who struck down lawlessness and made injustice childless, as Moses did to Egypt. This is the one who delivered us from slavery to freedom, from darkness into light, from death into life, from tyranny into an eternal kingdom, and made us a new priesthood, a people everlasting for himself. This is the Pasha of our salvation. This is the one who in many people endured many things. This is the one who was murdered in Abel, tied up in Isaac, exiled in Jacob, sold in Joseph, exposed in Moses, slaughtered in the Lamb, hunted down in David, dishonored in the prophets. This is the one made flesh in a virgin, who was hanged on a tree, who is buried in the earth, who was raised from the dead, who is exalted to the heights of heaven. This is the lamb slain. This is the speechless lamb. This is the one born of Mary, the fair you. This is the one taken from the flock and led to slaughter, who was sacrificed in the evening and buried at night, who was not broken on the tree, who was not undone in the earth, who rose from the dead and resurrected humankind from the grave below. Listen all you families of the nations, and see. A strange murder has occurred in the middle of Jerusalem. And who has been murdered? I am ashamed to say, I am obliged to tell. For if the murder took place by night, and if he was slaughtered in a deserted place, I might have been able to keep silent. But now here, in the middle of the street, in the middle of the city, in the middle of the day before the public gaze, the unjust murder of a just man has taken place. And so he is lifted up on a tall tree, and a placard is attached to show who has been murdered. Who is it? To say is hard, and not to say yet more fearful. Listen then, shuddering at him through whom the earth shook. He who hung the earth is hanging. He who fixed the heavens in place has been fixed in place. He who laid the foundation of the universe has been laid on a tree. The master has been profaned. God has been murdered. O mystifying murder, O mystifying injustice. The master is obscured by his body exposed and is not held worthy of a veil to shield him from view. For this reason, the great lights turn away. The day turn to darkness to hide the one denuded on the tree obscuring not the body of the Lord, but human eyes. For when the people did not tremble, the earth shook. And when the people did not fear, the heavens were afraid. And when the people did not rend their garments, the angel rent his own. And when the people did not lament, the Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High gave voice. The Lord clothed himself with humanity and suffered on behalf of the suffering ones, and bound on behalf of the ones constrained, and judged on behalf of the ones convicted, and buried on behalf of the ones entombed. He rose from the dead and cried out aloud, Who takes issue with me? Let him stand before me. I set free the condemned. I give life to the dead. I raise the entombed. Who will contradict me? It is I, says the Christ. I am he who destroys death and triumphs over the enemy and crushes Hades and binds the strong man and bears humanity off to heavenly heights. It is I, says the Christ. So come, all families of people, 
adulterated with sin and receive forgiveness. For I am your freedom. I am the Passover of salvation. I am the lamb slaughtered for you. I am your ransom. I am your life. I am your light. I am your salvation. I am your resurrection. I am your king. I shall raise you up by my right hand. I will lead you to the heights of heaven. There shall I show you the everlasting Father. He it is who made the heavens and the earth and formed humanity in the beginning, who is proclaimed through the law and the prophets, who took flesh from a virgin, who hung on a tree, who was buried in earth, who was raised from the dead, and ascended to the heights of heaven, who sits at the right hand of the Father, who has the power to save all things, through whom the Father acted from the beginning and forever. This is the Alpha and Omega. This, the beginning and the end. The ineffable beginning. The incomprehensible end. This is the Christ. This is the King. This is Jesus. This is the Commander, our Lord. This is He who rose from the dead. This is He who sits at the right hand of the Father. He bears the Father and is born by Him. To Him be the glory and the might forever. Amen. And with that, the service would end, and the followers of Jesus in Melito would go out into the day, into the world, knowing they were first fruits of the resurrection, living the kingdom life because of what happened in Jesus, what they believed happened in Jesus, and how that changed the world. Thanks for joining me this evening. Blessings on the rest of your holy week.